statistical mathematical fact. Never has been down, has broken every single record. There is no asset that has come close. It's the only thing in the industry that was not touched, that was not hacked, and it never fails doing what it promised in 2009. It's never What's failed. the best performing asset the world has ever seen? And you'll find out that it's Bitcoin. I'm glad to be back. I've been a little bit absent as far as these live spaces are concerned. I think the last one I did was close to two months ago. So um, every single year, you know, I spend about two months or so in Europe and I enjoy my time there. That's why I was a little bit on the light side with our our communications here, at least as far as live spaces. But I promised you yesterday in a brief test that uh, I would be do I would be coming at you live today. And uh, I want to talk to you about something that I think is extraordinarily important, especially right now. I think that we are in a very, very important, pivotal time for Bitcoin, the industry, the space, the country, the world, you, your family, everything. So we're going to talk about that a little bit today. So come on in, guys. Make yourselves comfortable. Grab the beverage of your choice. Uh, maybe even grab a pen and something to take notes with, whether you take notes on, in a notebook or with your cell phones. And of course, bring your questions. Now, it's interesting times in Bitcoin land, guys. I hope you are stacking harder. I hope no one's thinking about selling, which I think is absolutely ridiculous. And I do hope that everyone has their Bitcoin off exchange. All right. That is very key. That's very important. Now, the key the key theme that I want to communicate with you here today, guys, is that I believe that this is our final chance. It's not just your final chance. It's my final final chance, too. Now, what do I mean by that? I don't mean that it's your last opportunity to buy Bitcoin. You will be able to buy Bitcoin or exchange fiat currencies for Bitcoin for quite some time. I do not believe that you'll be able to do that forever throughout your lifetime. I believe that we are going to hit a point where no one is going to exchange a value depreciating government printed paper for the scarcest asset on planet earth and the most valuable asset on planet earth. Now, listen to me very carefully. When Bitcoin reaches about $160,000 of Bitcoin, it becomes not only the hardest money the world has ever seen, it's already the hardest money the world has ever seen. It's already the scarcest asset on planet Earth. But when it hits 160, it becomes the most valuable asset the world has ever known. Now, think about this. The most valuable asset in the world that's also the scarcest asset in the world, that's also an asset that's becoming scarcer than it already is as the scarcest asset in the world, and the hardest money that human beings have ever been exposed to. Now, think about that state and think about as that continues to be the case more and more, the desire to give that up for dollars, for Venezuelan bolivars, for Argentinian pesos. Are you kidding me? There's going to become a, there's, go, we're going to reach a point in your lifetime, my lifetime, if you're listening to here, everybody's lifetime where you will never be able to buy Bitcoin for fiat currency. And this is going to happen in your lifetime. So what exactly do I mean by your final chance? Am I talking about that? No, that's down the line. What I'm talking about is your final chance to maybe grab one full Bitcoin, which a lot of people are already priced out of at $66,000, $70,000 of Bitcoin. It might be your last chance. In my opinion, it's your last chance to grab major chunks of this thing because you are going to be outpriced. Do you know why? Because the attack is on people. That's right. There is an attack on Bitcoin and you. There is a concentrated effort right? By the powers that be to take this away from you. But listen, they're not planning to take this away from you by crashing the price. That's actually bringing it to you. They're attacking by taking this away from you to the upside. 
you are going to be priced out to the point where your exchanges will be so meaningless for that current period of time that it's not going to make the difference that grabbing it now is going to make. Let me tell you people, the attack is on and you are the prey. But most people think that the powers that be want to attack Bitcoin by crashing the price. And that could not be further from the truth. How do you take the masses? How do you take something valuable away from the masses? You price them out of it. How do you keep a neighborhood exclusive? You price them out. You make sure the value of each home in this neighborhood is so high that the riffraff can't come in, that the undesirables can't buy. You don't crash the price. You raise the price. And I am telling you, it is about to go through the stratosphere. Here's why. Let's delve deeper. You are not ready. I need this to really sink in. You think you're ready, but you're not ready. Here's why. Here's what you're missing. Okay. I just made, I just retweeted this, something that I think I tweeted initially um, on a variety of different occasion, occasions, but the last time I think I tweeted this was in May and I retweeted it today. A lot of people don't realize that Bitcoin is a mathematical protocol. It is based on maths. Maths doesn't care who's the president. Maths doesn't care what kind of convention is going on at the current moment. One plus one equals two, no matter who's in office. One plus one equals two, no matter what the Fed is going to do or say or is doing. One plus one equals two, no matter who hates on Bitcoin, no matter who loves Bitcoin, no matter who sells Bitcoin, no matter who buys Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a mathematical protocol. Maths is universal and it doesn't change for anyone. And because of this characteristic, because it is entirely maths, all right, we have a money that's for the first time entirely maths. Math, can, math cannot be manipulated by human beings. Math cannot be manipulated by organizations. Math cannot be manipulated by governments and nation states. Math cannot be manipulated. And for the first time we have a money that is in the form of maths that cannot be manipulated, cannot be controlled, cannot be, cannot be confiscated, cannot be stolen, cannot be debased, cannot be inflated. For the first time, we have a money that we can bank our entire lives on because it won't break its promise because one plus one will always equal two and it will always equal two for my children and their children and their children and their children. So for the first time, we have something 1000% reliable that we can count on. Now, I want you to look at this reliability. Every four years, every Bitcoin cycle, Bitcoin has cycles in four year, four year tranches, right? Every four years, Bitcoin has added a zero, all right? In the 2012 cycle, it went from 10 to two, to 100. So it added a zero from 10 to 100. 2016, the zero for that epoch, the zero for that four, four year period was 1,000. Okay, in 2020, the 2020 epoch, the zero is 10,000. Now, in 2024, the zero added is 100,000. Now, of course, if we can keep going. The 2028 epoch, the zero that belongs to that epoch is 1 million. And after that, in th 2032, the if this continues, and that's like saying, if maths continues to be maths, all right, it's 10, 10 million. Now, some people might say, well, Oliver, I remember Bitcoin being past 1,000 before 2016 or what have you. I remember when Bitcoin went way past 10,000 before 2020. I'll get to that. What I believe a lot of people fail to understand is that the zero belongs, the new zero belongs to that epoch, but Bitcoin is an overachiever. So when it's 
when it's time for Bitcoin to do the 10,000 epoch, it passes the 10,000 and goes to 70,000. It just, it's an overachiever. When it's time for its 1,000 epoch, it goes past 10,000. When it's time for its 100 epoch, it goes way past the 100 epoch. But you can't count the excess. There is a zero assigned for each epoch. Whether Bitcoin greatly supersedes that or even achieves two is not the point. The point is, is that I want you to be able to know how to assign the zero to the appropriate four-year period. And so we are in the $100,000 epoch now. And if history is any guide, Bitcoin greatly surpasses it. All right. Now, let's continue. Shout out to the rational root for this. Um, I think this is absolutely phenomenal. Look at this spiral. This spiral represents an entire four-year cycle. We should start it at the all-time new high part of the cycle, which is, if we look at this as a clock, I want you to look at three o'clock. So look at three o'clock. That's the new year. And if you look at you look at the new years, so you'll see 2016, 2000, 2020, 2024, and so forth and so on. That's the new year, the horizontal line. Three o'clock is the new year. Bitcoin tends to top out during the, its bull cycles at right before the new year. In this case, right before... 2025. Okay. Every four years, it's a year, it's two years. It's a year and a half after the having more or less. So let's start from there. Now, if we start from three o'clock, as we go to six o'clock, that is the bear market because after the top, the bear market starts. And so from three to six is the bear market. Okay. Now, from that represents one full year, okay? So from three to six is one year. From six o'clock to nine o'clock is another year, okay? So we bottom at six o'clock, more or less, look at the red dots. The red dots for each epoch, each four-year period, that shows you exactly where Bitcoin bottomed. The green dots right before three PM or three o'clock, that those represent exactly exactly where Bitcoin peaked. All right. So this remember this four this cycle is entirely four years. So we're starting right. We're starting. Let's start at 2022. So right before 2022, we top out in November or so of 2021. Most of you are familiar with that. Then we go from three o'clock to six o'clock. That entire year is 2022. We bottom just before the new year of 2023. Look at how consistently Bitcoin has bottomed right there. Look how consistently it has topped where it te tops right before the new year. Look at consistently Every single time where it is bottomed right before the next year, this is not freaking maths in your face. All right. Then we go to another year to three o'clock. And then right after the, th I mean, I'm um, to nine o'clock. I'm sorry. Right after nine o'clock, we have the having. Okay. Right after nine o'clock is the having. Okay. Now, from the having, right after nine o'clock, we go to 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock is the beginning of the next year. So we are now in the middle of the year, okay? We haven't reached 12 o'clock yet. 12 o'clock would be January 2024, I mean, January 2025. 
we're halfway, a little bit more than halfway to January 2025. But I want you to look at where the green starts to accelerate higher. Almost every time it starts right before or it starts right before the new year, right before 12 o'clock. Look at how the line hugs the, hugs the gray line and then starts to leave the gray line. I wish I had a marker. So look at just before 12 o'clock, you see the green hugging the gray line and then it lifts higher than the gray line. Price is starting to explode. All right, now in some cycles, this has happened right after or sometimes after the new year, but in most cycles, it happens right before the new year. What's right before the new year? The new year, the presidential election. And this is why I'm constantly pounding the table on you. You don't have a lot of time. Late year is when the fireworks happen. This is pretty much every single four-year cycle. You have the having, then the having waffles around until the latter part of the year and around presidential election time or right before that, boom, we freaking take off. And so all of this time, you should just be stacking in preparation for that liftoff period. There is no asset that performs this consistently according to maths than Bitcoin. It is the closest thing to certainty that we have in our universe. It's the, the closest thing to something that you can place 100% of your faith in. Everything else is noise. Guys, everything else is noise. Now, if you look very carefully, you will see that Bitcoin adds a zero. So if you look at the, ni the nine o'clock line if you look at the middle of the circle to the three o'clock line, this is where the prices are. So you go from, you have 10, the, the 10, the $10, the $100, the $1,000, the, the $10,000, and the $100. Now, I want you to think about this for a second. I told you that Bitcoin tends to add a zero every four years. So after 1,000, the next cycle adds 10,000. It adds a zero to 1,000. That becomes 10,000. But sometimes, guys, look at this. Sometimes what it does is that it doubles. Let me circle back to that. Another way, let me see if I did that. Sometimes it adds two zeros. So let me give an example of this. Believe it or not, in Bitcoin's 1,000 epoch, it not only passed 1,000, okay? It actually passed 10,000 and came very close to touching 20,000. It added actually three in one epoch. It was supposed to just achieve 1,000, but it went past 1,000, went past 10,000, and almost hit 20,000. We're talking a couple hundred dollars. Bitcoin's an overachiever. Sometimes it achieves only one. Sometimes it achieves two. And in one time, it achieved three. Don't get the overachievement mixed up with what zero belongs to which cycle, okay? Last cycle was the 10,000 cycle. Bitcoin not only achieved 10,000 because its low was 3,200. It not only achieved 10,000, it went to almost 70,000. It overachieved the 10,000. This cycle, we're, we went down to 15,500. And, and this cycle is now 100. Okay. So the best way to look at this is 
where is the cycle from the low? So if this cycle is the 100,000 cycle and this cycle's low is 15,000, it needs to achieve 100,000. If last cycle's um, number was 10,000 and its low was 3,200, it was, it needs to achieve 10,000. If the last cycle's um, number was 1,000, but its low was, I don't know, $200, it needs to achieve the 1,000 from the low. So our low is 15,500. Our cycle number is 100,000. But every single time Bitcoin adds a zero, or adds two, and on one rare occasion, it added three, or just about three. That's insane. So should we just expect 100,000 when that has never happened before? When it's never not superseded its zero number exponentially? Is this time gonna be different? No, in fact, I'm here to tell you that this, well, in fact, no, yes, it is going to be different, but it's going to be different the other way. Um, another easy way to look at this, guys, is that Bitcoin, every single having, these dots represent the having, the havings, Bitcoin's havings, where its issuance rate gets cut in half, right? Every single having, Bitcoin adds a new digit. So look at this. We started from zero, right, in 2009, right? So we started from zero. There's no digits. So we go from zero digits to, well, zero is a digit, too. So we go from one digit to two, to two digits, $12. Exponential jump. We go from, so the next having, if we achieve two digits, the next having will achieve three digits. We go from 12 to 653, 653, it added a digit. We went from a two-digit number to a three-digit number. The next having, we're supposed to achieve a four-digit number, right? So we go from 653, three digits, to 8,568. That's a four-digit number, all right? Now, the next having, all right, we're supposed to achieve a five-digit number. And on April 19th of this year, the having occurred at 62,500. That's a five-digit number. Four years from now, in 2028, we're supposed to have a six-digit number. Now, the question is, where in that six-digit number should we kind of be at? Now, if we look at history, history tells us somewhere near the middle so 62,000 is sort of like in the middle of your five digits. Do you understand? 653 is sort of in the middle of your three-digit range, 100 to 999. Okay? Um, 8,000, it's not quite 10,000, but, you know, it's... It's crazy how mathematically how mathematically consistent Bitcoin is. Is it pinpoint pinpoint? No, nothing's pinpoint like that. But it's certain enough for you to understand that this is the closest thing we have to mathematical certainty. All right? So that's another easy way of looking at it. 4 years from now, we're pretty guaranteed, if history is any guide, and it is, it's the only guide we have, we're pretty guaranteed to have six digits. I don't know where someone sent this to me. I don't know where it came from. I know it came from someone. Shout out to that person. All right. I like to give credit where I get things from, but someone sent it to me without a name. So I know it came from someone. So shout out to that person. Okay. I want you to take a look at how mathematical this looks. Look at every cycle. 
I want you to look how there's a run up in the middle of the box, in the middle of the triangle, in the middle of the four year cycle. You're looking at four year cycles here, right? So in the middle, there's a run up and then a drop. Then there's a run up, not quite as high and a drop, then a blast off. So let's go over that pattern again. Almost in the middle, there's a run up and then a drop. And then there's a milder run up, a pullback, and then a blast off into eternity. Okay. In 2020, look at it. We have a run up in the middle, a drop, another run up, not quite as big as the first run up, a drop, and then a blast off into eternity. Now look at what we have now. This is where we are now. We have a run up, a drop. This run up is not mild. Every other secondary run up was milder. Some of the run ups you can barely see, they're so mild. The 2020 run up was the sharpest, and this run up is the best of them all. It's all the way back. Something's changing here. Something's changing. But what you can basically see is that not only does this rhyme, this freaking repeats everything else in the We can apply, you know, the saying that um, history doesn't always repeat itself, but it rhymes. Well, with Bitcoin, we can say pretty much Bitcoin always repeats itself. So far, we are way ahead of every other cycle in Bitcoin's history. Do you understand this? There is no other cycle that is more bullish than the cycle that you're living in right now. But why doesn't it feel like that? This cycle is outperforming every single cycle in Bitcoin's history. And do you know how significant that is? Bitcoin over the last 15 years is the best performing asset the world has ever known. It is the best performing asset in virtually every single metric you can, you can imagine. It is outperformed in ways that are so embarrassing, no one wants to mention them if they're in other industries. There is nothing that human beings have ever come in contact with that is performed like Bitcoin is performed. And here, it is now performing better than that? What? Wait a minute. Bitcoin was the best performing thing on planet Earth. The best performing thing over the past 15 years that humans have ever known. And you're telling me, Oliver, that it's now beating its own record, that record, the record that made it number one by orders of magnitude, and it's now outperforming its own record? That's right. It is now ahead of itself. It is ahead of every single cycle that has ever occurred in Bitcoin's history. Now, if that's not bullish, I don't know what is. Something's changed. It's becoming better. It's performing better. Never before in a cycle did Bitcoin reach a new high before the halving. This cycle, Bitcoin reached a new high before the halving. Take a look at this. We are 100. I did this work for you today, guys. We are 101 days past the halving. So the having took place on April 19th. Today is 101 days past the having. Now, I went back to last cycle to find out where Bitcoin was 101 days after last cycle, after last, after last having in 2020. Take a look at this. In the last, on the right hand side of this, which you'll see, in the last, the at 101 days after, it's not on this chart. This chart is a little back. That arrow should be further to the right. But 101 days after the 2020 halving, Bitcoin was 41% below its prior peak. Now, I want you to look at the prior high of that chart around 20,000. You see that on the, we're looking at the right side of the image now. And the highest peak is around 20,000. So at 101 days after the 2020 halving, we're still 41% past below the prior cycle peak of 20,000. Now, if you look to the left-hand side of the chart, this is us now. 
It's a little dated, but this is us now for the most part. 101 days after the having is today, people. Listen to me carefully. It's today, right? 101 days is today after the having, April 19th. We were trading at 70,000 today. The prior peak was 69,000. We were trading at or above. Last having people, we were 41% below the, the, the all-time high, the prior high, the prior peak. This cycle, we're at or above, we were at or above one at 101 days now, at or above last cycle's peak. It, Bitcoin's never done that. The having 101 days later, it still needs to more than it need, it still needs to double to get to the prior peak. We don't need the double to get to the prior peak. We're at the freaking prior peak. Bitcoin's never done that ever. So do you see, are you starting to see that something is freaking different here? Bitcoin's outperforming itself. Bitcoin's outdoing itself. Bitcoin, if Bitcoin broke a leg in its axe before, it's broken two legs now. This is insane. Tom Lee, many of you might be familiar with him. He's actually one of the most respected analysts on the street, guys. Tom Lee, and look, I'm in this space. Tom Lee has a, a model portfolio that, um, that he adjusts and tweaks that has outperformed almost everything out there for quite a long time. He's very respected. And because of his affinity with Bitcoin in particular, he's not promoted as he should be um, with his kind of record. He is in a way, but because you can't deny his talent at this. But if he did not have an affinity for Bitcoin, he would be on every single freaking show every single day with his record. So he's very highly respected. And what is he calling for? He's calling for a $150,000 Bitcoin price this year, by the end of this year. And this is his base case this year, people. That is far more than a double from here in a few months. Samson Mao, who's no slouch at all either, he gives reasons why Bitcoin could actually hit 1 million this year. Now I understand how ridiculous that sounds. But how ridiculous would it have sounded to you at $200 when Bitcoin is supposed to maybe achieve, go from 200 to 1,000, it passes 1,000, passes 10,000, and almost goes to 20,000? That would have sounded ridiculous too. Now listen, I have a question. All of this brings me to one key question. This is my main question for you today. It's this, and I want you to ponder this. If you could more than double your entire life, listen to me. If you could more than double everything you've ever worked for, all that you are, all that you've ever accomplished, listen to me carefully. Some of you are in your thirties listening to me. Some of you are in your 20s. Some of you are in your 50s, your 40s. Some of you might even be in your 60s. What I'm trying to tell you is that whatever age you are, you have worked your entire life to have what you have today, to be who you are today, to have accomplished what you've accomplished today. Your entire life can be summed up by what you are today, what you have today, what you've saved up until this point, 
and what you've accomplished. That is the that is the proof of your entire life. What if you could take that and double your entire life within the next few months? If you've lived, if you're 38 years old, what if you could double everything you worked for, for for your entire life? Not all 38 years because you weren't working when you were a baby, but you understand what I'm saying. Your entire 30 years, you double it in a few months. Would you do it? That's the kind of opportunity I believe we have. We have something as close to mathematically certain as one is ever going to have, that a double is coming. A double is coming. If, if you, if you got, if you were, if you knew with absolute certainty, right, that tomorrow, when you go to Vegas and tomorrow, if you play this crap table or whatever, or this roulette wheel, right? At this time, it's guaranteed to double your money. What would you do? I'm just going to, I'm going to, let me put $5 on that. No, not if you were absolutely certain, not if it was mathematical certainty for you, you would get everything that you possibly can get your hands on. You would call up every neighbor. You would knock on every neighbor's door, call up every family member. You might even maybe visit your bank. If you were mathematically certain, if you knew that it was a guarantee. Now, I know many of you are saying, Oliver, it's kind of dangerous for you to say it's a guarantee that Bitcoin's double. No. I think it's dangerous to say Bitcoin's not going to double. With all of this evidence in your face, I think it's not only dangerous to say Bitcoin's not going to double. I think it's stupid to say Bitcoin's not going to double. I think it's ignorant to say Bitcoin's not going to double. That's the dangerous part. It's not dangerous. This is certainty. Maybe it doesn't happen when we think it's going to happen, but Bitcoin's doubling. And which means that you can double your entire life. And you can do it more certainly with Bitcoin than any other item, any other thing that you can possibly imagine in that little pea brain of of yours or ours. Here's another thing that people keep reminding me is very, very dangerous. You say, Oliver, it's dangerous to say it's different this time. And I actually have generally agreed with that. But when I discovered Bitcoin and went down the rabbit hole, As I go down the rabbit hole more and more, I start to realize more and more that it's dangerous the other way. With everything else, it's very hard to say, it's very dangerous to say this time is different. But with Bitcoin, it truly is different today. Bitcoin is different. I showed you that Bitcoin has never made a new high before a having before, ever. That's different. Bitcoin has never been at or near the prior cycle peak 101 days after the halving. Bitcoin's at or near the prior peak 101 days after the halving. Something's different. This time is different. That is factual. Do you understand? It's factual. And let me tell you why I believe Bitcoin is not only going to not have diminishing returns, It is going to break every single record it has ever achieved. That's right. You heard it here first. I'm not scared to say that. Bitcoin is going, save this clip. Bitcoin is going to break every single record it has ever achieved, ever. I said it. Now record it and hold me to it. I'm not scared of that. Let me explain to you why. This time is different because at no other time did Bitcoin have regulatory clarity. Never. 
Bitcoin became the best performing asset the world has ever known. The best performing asset over 15 years, the best performing asset over 10 years, the best performing asset over five years, the best performing asset over three years. At, oh, virtually every single metric you can, you, can, you can conjure. Do you understand? And it did this without regulatory clarity. So what do you think it's gonna do now that it has regulatory clarity in the United States, which is basically the one that counts? What do you think is gonna happen with regulatory clarity? At no time during the past cycles did Bitcoin have spot Bitcoin ETFs, which opens the floodgates to institutional sponsorship. Never, never, never in the past did it have spot Bitcoin ETFs approved. And it became the best performing asset the world has ever known without this. What do you think it's going to do with spot Bitcoin ETFs? Which means that we have entities that they're their entire existence is based on buying every single day, every single day, forever, forever. What do you think is going to happen with these? We never had a corporate reserve game theory going on in the Bitcoin space. Never. Never were companies announcing, oh, we're putting Bitcoin on, we're, 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 we're raising capital to, put, to buy Bitcoin to put it, put it on our treasury. And what point? In Bitcoin's past, did we have this? Never. Bitcoin became the best performing asset the world has ever known without corporate reserve game theory going on. What do you think is going to happen with it? Less? Horror performance? Institutional adoption. Guys, we're just getting warmed up with institutional adoption. Bitcoin did not have institutional adoption. I'm not saying that Bitcoin, I'm not saying that there were no institutions that had Bitcoin. I'm not saying that. That's ridiculous. I'm talking about mass adoption, where you hear week after week after week, Bitcoin, someone coming into the Bitcoin space, a new entity coming into a Bitcoin space. We never had that. That is just starting now. We never had pension fund acceptance, guys. Never, 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 never. Bitcoin blew away everything human beings ever had access to without pension fund exceptions. Do you understand how big pension funds are? And do you understand the type of money they have? I separate pension funds away from your average institution. They are not your average institution. The reason is become because their money is long and it's large. So long meaning it's long term. They're not under the gun. They're not under the knife to perform over the next quarter, the next year. Their jobs aren't on the line in that time period like a hedge fund. You know, where their bonuses are based on, you know, their performance by the end of the year. So for them, they like want a big bonus. I can't put a lot in Bitcoin and Bitcoin can have a 30% drop and eliminate my bonus. I'm not doing that. That's the Wall Street game. I've been the Wall Street for 37 years. I know the game. I know what you do to protect. I would have a big, big middle of the year and I would actually tread water to protect my bonus that came from that big win in the middle of the year. I wouldn't do anything to mess up my late year bonus for my family. I wouldn't add an asset that had the potential to drop 35% in a week or two weeks, eliminating my gains. I'm not doing that. That's traditional institutional world on Wall Street. Pension funds, you have to separate them out. They don't operate like that. Their money is big and it's long. They don't care about a 20% drop, a 15% drop, even a 25% drop. They use those to accumulate for the future. To me, pension fund adoption is the strongest and most powerful of all institutional adoption. You understand? So that is huge. Bitcoin never had that. Now, every single week, we've got a new pension fund announcing to the world it's adding 2%, 1.5% of its funds to Bitcoin. Are you kidding me? So what, we're going to have, wait a minute, without this, Bitcoin beat 
every everybody else's ass, but now it's not going to beat everybody else's ass with this. Are you kidding me? Bitcoin was the best before this, and it's going to be not the best with it. <laughs> How does that even make sense? No, Bitcoin's going to break its own freaking records with all these things. Political game theory. Since when did Bitcoin have an actual president? Not the president of some banana republic. The president of the United States went to a freaking Bitcoin conference. Are you kidding me? Two presidential candidates. Well, three, actually. How many senators? You're not going to be able to be elected in 2028 unless you have a strong Bitcoin platform. That's almost already here now. 2028, it's a wrap. Bitcoin never had this. Small nation state adoption. El Salvador, other nation states. And I always get this, uh, Oliver, but they're, they're really tiny. But isn't that always how everything starts? You know, you show off your little four-year-old kid kicking the soccer ball. Football, I'm in Latin America, so I should say football. But for Americans, kicking the soccer ball. And do you say, oh, but he kicked it so, he didn't kick it very far. It was such a little kick. Dude, wait, he's four years old. Just wait. Just wait. Kid's four years old. What are you talking about? Everything starts off small. You start off with small nation states adopting, then mid, mid, medium station states, nation states adopting, then big ones. Small corporations adopting micro strategy to medium, maybe Dell to big ones, Google, Apple. You always start small. You know, but we never had this. There was no nation states that had had Bitcoin policy. It's crazy. And let's not forget FASB accounting rule change. Up until this year, holding Bitcoin as a publicly traded company in particular, but basically as any company, holding Bitcoin on your balance sheet, it was punitive to your earnings, your profits. It was punitive. It was a punishment. And you just can't really do that if you're publicly traded. If you're private, who cares? But if you're publicly traded, that's a death knell. FASB changed it to now it's not punitive. Are you kidding me? This is why you're starting to see corporations now stepping up to say, we're raising, we're doing, we're doing a, a, a you know, we're doing a, a series this and a series that to raise 400 million, 121 million to buy Bitcoin for our balance sheet because it's no longer punitive. Now I tell you, does this look like it's the same? No, there's nothing the same about this cycle, nothing. Do you understand? And Bitcoin is already factually showing you, telling you, in fact, in your face, showing you that I'm different. I went to a new high before the halving. I never did that before. I'm 101 days in trading at or near the prior cycle's high. I never did that before. I, this is the, I am the best I've ever been in a cycle, ever. It's in your face. It's telling you. It's communicating to you. Through its price, it, it doesn't have a marketing team. It has its price. It doesn't have a management team. It has its price. It communicates to you through its price.
And what is it saying to you? If it could freaking pull up a chair and sit next to you, it would say, look at me, look at me, would point to itself. Always, I had I had a childhood friend, guys, uh, who had a huge stutter, and I always honor him by doing that. <laughs> he would always, when he looked at something and pointed to something, he would always get stuck. So if he saw a really fancy car and wanted us to look at it, he'd be like, la, 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 and we would have to hit him in the back to break his stutter. La, 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 la. All right. That's what Bitcoin would do. If it could pull up a chair, doesn't have a marketing team, doesn't have a doesn't have a PR team, doesn't have a management team. It has its price. If it could literally pull up a chair and sit next to you, what would it say? This cycle, it would say my price models. All right. So let's get ready. Now, listen, let me preface this by saying people. Price model, pricing, coming up with a price, a future price is stupid. But let's be stupid. <laughs> it's okay. Sometimes being stupid is fun, but let's do it on purpose. But we don't need to be right with the price. And this is what I feel a lot of people miss. We don't need to be right with price. We only need to be directionally right. And I am here to tell you, as certain as night follows the freaking day, we are, we are directionally correct. We are directionally right. That's all we need to be is directionally right, is that it's higher than now. That's it. We're directionally right. By the end of 2025, we're higher than today. That we can practically be certain of. So we don't need a price. We don't need what I'm about to go into. But let's do it anyway. All right. There can be some small value in having price models. And I don't believe in having. So when you have a when you have a price target, I think that's stupid. When you have a variety of models that are based on something concrete and it's not just one so I like to have three models, then this is what everyone in finance does. You have to have some basis, some map of generally where you, where you think you're going. You can't just be a sea, a, a ship at sea with no guidance whatsoever. So this is what we're doing here. We're not coming up with a specific price. We're coming up with three models based on something very, very solid. We're coming up with a low model, a high model and a middle model. Let's do it. Okay. My first model is called my 21, my 21 X, the low price model. Now, what does this mean? This means that this model is based on what Bitcoin did last cycle, last tw the 2020 cycle. We're in the 2024 cycle. So in the 2020 cycle, Bitcoin's cycle low that it was working off of was 3,200. It went from 3,200 as a cycle low to 69,400. So it went up 21 times the low. If Bitcoin, now remember, it did this. It went up 21 times from the cycle low of 3,200. Listen to me carefully, people. It went up 21 times from the cycle low of 3,200. It did this without regulatory clarity, without spot Bitcoin ETFs, without FASB rule changes, without institutional adoption, without pension fund acceptance, without political game theory starting to kick off without nation states adopting. Do you understand? It 21 x the low. Without this, now we have this. So what if, but let's, so it should, it's, it wouldn't be strange to say, well, well, now that we have this, it should more than 21x, right? So, but let's not do that. Let's just say that for whatever reason, Bitcoin does the same. It didn't have any of these things last cycle and it 21x the low. Let's just say 
it repeats with all of these things. Why, I don't know, but let's just say it. So 21 times the low. Now, what was the cycle? What's the cycle low we're operating off of now? 15,500. So 15,500, 21x that. I'll get to that in just a second. All right. We'll get to it. That's cycle number one. That's model number one, using the cycle low and the prior cycle, right? Using the prior cycles low, how far it went from there. And then saying, what if that repeats this cycle? Now that's intelligent. Okay. We have a model. That's model number one. 70,000 in my mind, this cycle is what 10,000 last cycle was. All right. Now I say that for a reason. If we go back to last cycle, the 2020, now you can see, if we look at the 2020 cycle, I want you to see how we had this resistance around 10,000. All right. So Bitcoin would bump up against 10,000 and drop, bump up against 10,000 and drop. So first, guys, take a look at this. First, you'll see that Bitcoin surpassed 10,000, right? That's Bitcoin surpassing 70,000 this time. But then after it passed 10,000 and settled under 10,000, its problem became 10,000. 10,000 and drop again, you see? 10,000 and drop again, you see? 10,000 and drop again. That's what it's doing now with 70,000. We went close to 74,000 then drop below now we're 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 hitting the ceiling of 70,000 falling back 70,000 falling back 70,000 is the new 10,000 tell me you understand that somebody comment for me tell me you understand that 70,000 is the new 10,000 you can see it here on the chart right so let's go to now Here's 70,000. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mark it right through 70,000. There's 70,000. More or less, right? Boom. What you find is that we went past 70,000, just like we went past 10,000. And now, more or less, we, we fail at it, right? So we fail at it. We fail at it. We fail at it. We fail at it. We, well, partially failing at it now again. But it always does this. Bitcoin is maths, guys. Just take a look. Bitcoin is maths. It did it the last time. But here's the thing. Look at look at look at what look at what's really crazy here guys, right? What's crazy is that it did it last time very far off the the high. So it was bumping up against that resistance at 10,000, but that's 10,000 is 100% below 20,000, the high. Now that's not the case. Now we're bumping up against 70,000 above the high. Do you see that? Tell me you see that. We were doing it 100% below the high last cycle. Now we're doing it above the high? Are you kidding me? Are you picking up what I'm laying down here? Are you getting it? This is the most bullish cycle Bitcoin has ever put in so far. Yet, for most, it doesn't feel like that. How interesting is that? 
Bitcoin has achieved more than it ever has in its entire history. Yet it feels like it's actually not as good. How interesting is that? It's wild, right? All right. Been here since 2016. Always the same. That's right. Cryptovinch.ftm. I wasn't here in 2016. Um, but I have, guys, I have spent tens of thousands of hours. I've gone over every single post that has ever been written about Bitcoin. I've read every sentence, every period, every comma, every letter that's ever been written about Bitcoin, ever. I'm starting to lose track of all the books. They're coming out so fast. But I've gone pretty deep down the rabbit hole, and it continues to deepen. I, by no stretch of the imagination, would ever tell you that I know a lot about Bitcoin. But I probably spent a lot more time than the majority, than the vast majority out there. And I can tell you in all of my investigative work, all of my research, all of my sleepless nights over the last five years, I'll tell you this. I've been in the financial world for, 40, for, for 37 years professionally. I've been trading the markets for 43 years, if you count the idiot years, the learning years. Um, and I've done extraordinarily well in my field. I've done nothing else with my life. I have no other skill but playing the financial markets. I've never done anything else with my entire life. And I've managed to do extraordinarily well doing that. But I will tell you this, I've never, ever come across anything remotely close to this. Never. I have shaken this thing up. I've shaken this thing every which way but loose. I've tried to crack it open I've tried to find the faults, find the flaw, find, I can't. And I've done that earnestly. And I believe that we are extraordinarily fortunate to be living at this time because we're going to be judged. The only ledger, the only history book that will ever matter in the future is the Bitcoin time chain. You see, in the past, history was written by men, in particular, the men in control, the winners of wars. They wrote history. That's not history. That's not really what happened. Do you understand? So in the future, history which is nothing more than the interactions between human beings, which all of which are going to be recorded on the Bitcoin time chain. The Bitcoin time chain is going to be the writer of history. And so your, your prodigy, your future generations will be able to look back and see my great uncle was so dumb. He lived during a time when you could buy Bitcoin. I wish we could buy Bitcoin today. My great grandfather lived during the time where you could change government money for Bitcoin and he didn't. And you will be disliked. But generation after generation, you will be labeled the dunce of your entire bloodline. But some of you are going to be the heroes. Some of you will have your paintings on the freaking wall, living room walls of homes not yet built. Some of you are going to have monuments erected in your favor, in my opinion because you were smart enough when it was time to be smart to step up to the table and do this thing. This is a defining moment for, I think, all of us. 
This is that moment when, this is that land grab moment where at a certain point during the exploratory years of the Anglo-Saxons coming to America, they would have land runs. And they would literally put up posters on saloon doors and walls announcing the land run. We're going to have a land run tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. Come on out with your families if you want free land. Freaking believe me, free land? Is there, is there freaking free? Families would show up. They'd have chalk lines. And... One family would stand in front in, in one aisle and another family would stand in front of another aisle and another aisle. And one dude with a gun would say, when I shoot this gun, y'all take off and run as fast as you can. And when I shoot it again, you take this wooden stake and you drop down to your knees and you put that stake in that ground, boy. And that's going to be your land. From the starting point to your stake, that's where stake your claim came from. Free freaking land runs. Now, Bitcoin had its free land run, period. It's not free now. But even, in the Amer in the, in, in, even during that exploratory period, it went from free land runs to getting land for dirt cheap just for going out west. Not free anymore, but dirt cheap. And I'm telling you, we're still dirt cheap. We're in the dirt cheap period. Some of you might not believe that, but we are. But not for long. Not for long. 70,000 is the new 10,000, right? Now, my second model is 7x the having price. So remember, the first model is 21x the cycle low. The second model is 7x the halving price. So last cycle, Bitcoin's price at the halving was roughly 8,600. And what it did was it went to 69,400. That's a 7x from the price on its halving day. All right? So it's 7x. 8,618 more or less. All right? Depends on when you measure it. But Bitcoin 7x from here. The having price this year was around 63,000. So what if we 7X from 63? Now remember, last year it's 7X from the having price without all the things we mentioned, without regulatory clarity, ETFs, pension fund acceptance, institutional adoption, corporate treasury game theory, political game theory, nation state adoption, FASB rule change. It didn't have any of that. Didn't have presidents of the United States freaking showing up at Bitcoin shows. It didn't have this. And it's 7 x I'm saying let's not even add something because today we have all of this. Let's keep it the same as if Bitcoin has none of that. Shouldn't it at least 7x the way it did last time? 63,000 times 7x. Let's do it. It's possible. That's the second price model. Let's talk about the third price model, which is my 2.5x, the high price model. So the last cycle high was the, the prior, the cycle high that the 2020 cycle was operating off of was 20,000. That was the prior prior cycle peak, right? 20,000. So what did Bitcoin do last cycle? It 2.5x that $20,000 price, right? Went close to 70,000, almost 70,000. So 20,000 to 70,000, that's a 2.5x, right? So what's the cycle high of that we're operating off now? 69,000. So if we want to round that to 70,000, what's two, two and a half times 70,000? Right, 175, right? So, can we do that? Apps of freaking lootly. We can do that. Okay, so those are my three price models for this cycle. Listen to me carefully. What do I mean by this cycle? This cycle ends 
at the end of 2025. So I'm saying that I've designed, I've come up with three price models for this cycle, not talking about forever, this cycle, by the end of 2025, okay? Now, let's look at this. Let's look at it in a summary. And here you go. The 21 times price model will bring us to an, an estimated USD de, de, dollar denominated price of Bitcoin before 2026, meaning by late 2025, 325. The 7X model would bring us to 448. And the 2.5X model brings us to 173, 175, something like that, right? All right, 173.50 if we used a 69.4. Okay, now remember by late 2024, Thomas Lee, not my, these models above are before late 2025. The models below are before or before, yes, during late 2025 or before 20 late 2024 or before 2025 so we're talking about october november december last quarter of 2025 tom lee has an estimated price of 150 samson samson mao has a, has a price where he says we could go to 1 million i say we can go to 175 that would be my base case which means that you know it could be a little bit less it could be a little bit more but that would be my base case this year this year by late 2025, we're talking about the numbers above. Very quickly, because I'm going to have to go here, guys. I've been going quite a bit. My 2020% long-term, my 20% long-term value model. I want to, I want to talk to you about very, very quickly here. Um, you know what? As a matter of fact, I'm going to do another live that does this. I think this deserves a lot more time. So I'm going to do another live, maybe tomorrow. I'll come back and I'll do a deep dive on my 20% long-term value model because what we've covered is the short term, which is really this cycle. This cycle I consider to be relatively short term, right? So we're talking about 18 months less, all right? We're talking about the rest of this year and all of 2025, that's relatively short term. I wanna to talk to you about a long-term price model which I think is very important to have because you need to have a big number in your mind to operate off of. And so I'm gonna come back tomorrow, do another live on that specifically, all right? I wanna thank you all for joining me here, guys. I do have to run. I love you all to death. I'll see you tomorrow. Ciao for now. Boom, stack harder, guys. My name is Oliver Velez, and I am your 13%er Bitcoiner. Be safe out there, and until next time. Boom!